crazy to my music and takes him awake. My only wish is that it brings him to a better place. You see, the universe is listening every time we speak. What you think is sick and you should practice what you preach. Okay, so now we're going to start a topic called linearization. Linearization. So it has the word uh, line in it, right? So we'll, we'll be dealing with something resembling a line, right? Or something that is a line. So what we're going to do is start with the relation that we've already learned. So that delta f is equal to f of a plus delta x minus f of a. So that's basically the change in our uh, function value, right? And we know that this is about equal to f prime of a and then times delta x, right? So what I'm going to do is take this equation here, this this approximation, right, with that um, approximate equal sign. What I'm going to do is actually move this guy over to the right side, this uh, f of a. So we're going to add that to both sides, right? That's going to go away on the left, so we're left with f of a plus delta x is about equal to f prime of a times our delta x plus an f of a, okay? So we're going to go a little bit further, uh, and I'm going to say that, remember our a plus delta x, so that was equal to just an x. But um, anyways, so we know that, well, we know that delta x is equal to, let's go back a little bit, delta x was equal to x minus a, okay? Um, so we know that x minus a is equal to delta x, all right? So what we're going to do now is replace all of these delta x's, these, both of these here, with an x minus a. So let's see what happens. So we get f of a plus, and now we have x minus a in there, okay, is about equal to f prime of a times x minus a plus that f of a, okay? So this final line, um, this positive a and negative a can cancel out, and we get that f of x is about equal to f prime of a, and then times that x minus a, which is the change in x, plus f of a, okay? So um, I'll rewrite this on the next slide, and I'll explain what does this signify. So having that f of x there, so f of x, uh, which is equal to, we're going to make this equal to like an l of x. Uh, but anyways, right now we'll just keep f of x, and then we have our f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a. Okay, so here's where our linearization comes in. So L of x, which is called the linear approximation. So this is our linear approximation. Approximation. Okay, so this is equal to whatever we see on the right side. F prime of a times x minus a plus the function evaluated at a. Okay, so with this, see how we changed it to an equal sign? like a straight equal sign instead of the approximation. So this is our approximation, so we're saying that's what our approximation is equal to. So with this, what we can do is approximate our, the value of our function, f of x, if it's differentiable at, um, so I'll say we can approximate, approximate uh, our f of x if um, it is differentiable, it is differentiable at x equals a, because we have to have this term in here, right? So at x equals a, uh, and if our new x, if x is close to a, close to a. So this term down here basically means that our delta x is small, okay? Which we've seen before, all right? So let's uh, do an example where we actually apply this formula. So what we're going to do is compute, compute the linearization linearization of, and I'll give you a function, uh, of, and we have f of x is equal to uh, square root of x times e to the x minus 1, and then uh, we're going to do it at a equals uh, a positive 1, okay? So how are we going to do this? Let's write down our uh, linearization, or also known as our linear approximation. Okay, so this is going to be L of x is equal to f prime at a uh, times x minus a plus our f of a. All right, so first of all, uh, what we're going to need is we have our a. Okay, so we already know that a equals 1, so that's good. We have our function, um, and we need the first derivative of it, and then we can plug everything in. Okay, so the first derivative 
is going to be what? So we're going to um, take that. So we have actually two things being multiplied, two functions, right? So this is like our u and our v. And we're just going to apply the product rule. So we're going to have u v prime plus u prime v. So this is going to be equal to uh, what? So we just write down the u function. So that'll be our square root of x. And then uh, the, the uh, derivative of v would be d dx, d dx of e to the x minus 1. Okay, and then we have plus the derivative of u, so d dx of square root of x, or x to the 1 half, and then we just rewrite the v uh, function there. Okay, so let's differentiate some more. Um, so now we have our square root of x, okay, and then the d dx there is just going to be e to the x minus 1, and from the chain rule we're going to pull out a 1 from the coefficient of the x, so that doesn't really change anything. And then we have um, plus... And then here, this is like an x to the 1 half power, so if we apply the power rule, we just bring down that 1 half in front. We have our x, and we subtract a whole 1 from that exponent, so we get a negative 1 half, okay? And then that is multiplied times e to the x minus 1, all right? So we'll continue this on the next slide. So where we're at is f prime of x is equal to uh, the square root of x, that's an x, times e to the x minus 1. Okay, and then plus e to the x minus 1, and now I'll just write uh, the 1 half, so there's a 2 on the bottom, and we had x to the negative 1 half, so I'll just write it down here as a square root of x. Okay, so this is um, basically it. Now I'm just going to factor out that e to the x minus 1 from both terms, and uh, we'll call it a day. <laughs> so this is a 1, sorry. Uh, so this is a 1 over 2 radical x. Okay, so we have something like that, and now... Um, so we have our f prime of x, so this is f prime of x, and for our formula, we'll need to find f prime of a, where a equals 1, so let's plug in a 1 and see what we get. So f prime of 1 is equal to e to the 1 minus 1, and then this will be times uh, the square root of 1 plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 1. So this is going to turn out to be e to the 0, so that's just a 1 in front, so this is just a 1, and then we have a 1 plus, uh, and then a 1 half, right? So that'll just be a 3 over 2. So 3 over 2, that is our f prime of 1. So now that we have that piece of information, let's continue on with the problem. So uh, what else is left for our linearization? So we have L of x should be equal to f prime at a, so that's a 1 in this problem, and then x minus a, which is also x minus 1, right? And then um, we have our plus f of 1 which is a, okay? So we have this one. We know that that is 3 over 2, and this is just there, kind of. And then now let's figure out f of 1. So f of 1, um, that's going to be equal to, when we plug in a 1 in for the x spots, so that'll be square root of x, which is now a 1, times e to the x minus 1, so that'll be a 1 minus 1. Okay, so here we plugged in the 1, and here we plugged in the 1 for x. Okay, so this is a 1 times e to the 0 power, which is just going to turn out to be a 1 overall. All right, so now we know that this is a 1, and let's plug everything into our linearization. So L of x is going to be equal to 3 over 2 times x minus 1, and then plus a 1. All right, so let's simplify, and we get 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2 plus 1. So our L of x is going to be simply 3 over 2x and then minus a one-half. All right, so the last topic uh, basically comes from we, um, whenever we approximate or uh, estimate things or uh, make linearizations for things, there is an error. Uh, there's a certain error term. And graphically, this is what it looks like. We've seen it in the other uh, graph that I drew, but I didn't really point it out. We're going to come back to it anyways. So if this is like point A, okay, here's our x and our y axes, and then this is our f of A, f of A, okay, and then let's say we're going along, right, so here's our A plus delta x, so this is, uh, this change in x is our delta x, all right, so now we're at this point up here, right, and this is our new um, f, the value of our function, so f of A plus delta x, so this is the actual value up here, okay, so this is actual, actual value, all right? And now let's look at the linearization. So if we draw our tangent line at A, 
So let's do that and see what happens. So we have our tangent line going like this, okay? So something like that. And um, according to our linearization, so this line is our L of X, okay? So that's what we meant by lineariza linearization. We formed this line, okay? And we've, we've uh, just learned how to make the equation for that. So anyways, this is our line. And when we plug in that A uh, plus delta X, also known as our new X value, this is our new X value, we go up and our linearization tells us that it's here, okay? So that's our linearization value. So this is L of X, or also known as L of A plus delta X. So this is L of X. Uh, so this disparity, this little difference here, that is uh, the error, all right? So the error, this is our error. And if we blow it up a little bit, so let me draw, um, what, what does this look like? So here's our triangle. Uh, right down there and then there's the rest of our graph. So let me let me draw it a little bit bigger. So here's our triangle. This is our uh, L of X line. Okay, so this is L of X. This is delta X here and our graph continues on. It kind of curves up from this point right here. So it's going to kind of go up a little bit. All right, let's let's say it looks like a little bit like that. Okay, so this, um, let's see, what do we have going on? So this is our delta X. We figured out this to be F prime of A uh, and then delta x, okay? And then we have that um, the point, remember how I drew two points, right? So this is what the linearization tells us, the one right here. Uh, that's where we're at at a certain x value, also known as a plus delta x, okay? Um, but then the actual value of our function is up there, right? Because this is our actual f of x graph. So here's our actual, and here's our estimate estimate okay so the difference between these two uh, basically between this value and um, the the change so the vertical change uh, and and this value from all the way to the bottom from where we started this is our f of x uh, f of a sorry f of a uh, and this is our f of a plus delta x anyway so this value here is our actual delta f um, sorry I kind of squished it into the corner over there uh, but basically, okay, let me draw one more time. We're going to try this one more time just so I can get out this last point. So we have our f of a. This is the level f of a, okay? And then here's our graph that continues on upward, all right? Here's our f of a, a plus x, plus delta x, f of a plus delta x. So that's what we see up here, right, that difference there. And then on the side, on along the side here, we see f, t f times... Um, f prime of a times delta x. There we go. That's that value here. So we have a little difference, right? So the dashes I'm drawing now, that's the vertical part of our triangle, okay? So this is f prime of a delta x, but the difference, the actual difference uh, in the values of our functions is delta f, right? Which is a little bit taller in this case uh, than our approximation. So the little difference in between, see this little difference there? That difference is the error. Okay, so that's the big picture. Uh, that is the error. All right. So um, formulaically, uh, it tells us like error is basically so error is the absolute value. So the difference between our delta f, so how much our function actually changed, minus f prime evaluated a times delta x, which is our estimated uh, like from the linearization. Right. So this is our actual actual difference minus the estimated difference estimate okay so um, from this we can j basically just obtain our error so actual is obtained from uh, usually from a calculator or you can do it by hand if it's easy um, so we could say from calculations and then the estimate comes from our linear approximation so I'll say linear approximation okay all right, so um, basically that's what you do is compute this um, by plugging it into your linear approximation. Um, and then this would be obtained by taking, for example, remember the, the other problem was um, like cube root of 8.1. Then you would just take that, plug it into your calculator to get the actual value. And then um, remember we got the estimate to be something like 2.0083 or something like that, or 38. So anyways, that's what you would do, and then just subtract to find the error, all right? So um, one other thing, 
uh, building off of air is something called percentage air. So percentage air is the following. Uh, it's the absolute value of the error itself, so of your actual minus estimate over the actual value or the true value, actual value. Okay, so that's the absolute value, and then you multiply it times 100%. So you see how much percentage you are off by, okay? All right, so that's it. Uh, that concludes our, um, our overview section, our concept video on linear approximation and applications. Um, Good luck studying, uh, and good luck on your homework.